I have been hearing about Explicit Sync for a long, long time. The original solution went into place about five years ago. Then they realized the original solution wasn't going to be great long term, and a new solution started being discussed about four years ago, with the actual implementation properly starting around two years ago. Now, for anyone who has absolutely no idea about Explicit Sync, it has long been known as the cause of many of the flickering and stuttering issues if you're using NVIDIA on Wayland. Now, I've seen people confuse the two. Explicit Sync is not Adaptive Sync. Adaptive Sync is variable refresh rate. That's all good on everything besides GNOME. Explicit Sync, on the other hand, that's a problem. Two whole years ago, Linux DRM Sync Object V1 was requested for merger. This has gone through a lot of discussion and a lot of people working on different implementations. And then finally, two weeks ago, thank you for your contribution and patience, it finally got merged. But it didn't just get merged into Wayland protocols. This is a big one because it's actually got implementations on basically everything. They're not merged on everything yet, but they're getting very close. Across things like Mesa, XWayland, EGL, and of course, the desktops and desktop libraries as well. Now, this is one of those rare cases where GNOME is actually ahead. GNOME already has their merger in place. KDE is still working on it, but it is getting very close to being done. If all goes well, the milestone is set at 6.1, so we should be seeing this ship sometime around June later this year. And to accompany this work, Xavier Hugel, the guy who's actually writing this merger quest, also wrote a blog post to explain basically what Explicit Sync is and why we need it and how it works. So why is synchronization needed? When applications render things, that rendering doesn't happen immediately. Instead, they effectively record a list of commands with OpenGL or Vulkan for the GPU to execute. And that list then gets handed to the GPU to execute at its own pace. Basically, a command queue. This is needed for performance reasons. If the CPU had to wait for the GPU to execute each command one by one, both CPU and GPU would often sit around doing nothing except waiting for the other one to finish its task. By executing commands on the GPU while the CPU does other things, like preparing new commands for the GPU, both can do a lot more work in the same time. Technically, you could have them do things one by one, but effectively what you have there is single threading across both the GPU and the CPU, which is obviously going to be very, very slow. On the bright side, it could make debugging considerably easier, as long as you're okay with unusable applications. So, not a great situation. However, in practice, rendering commands don't stand on their own. You might be running one task to render an image and another one to process the result into something else or to read it back into the CPU so that it can be saved as a file on disk. If you do that without synchronization, you might be reading from the image in the middle of rendering or before the GPU has started work on the buffer at all. This is known as a race condition and race conditions are very, very bad. If you have work being done in multiple places, often this is discussed in the context of just the CPU, but this also makes sense in this context as well. If you have work that depends on other work being done by separate things, the prerequisite work must be finished before the next step is completed. Otherwise, problems will occur. In the context of a CPU, that could be doing maths in the wrong order, it could be reading a value before the value has been assigned yet. Basically, if there is a set order things need to be completed in, synchronization is very important. Now the new model and the thing we are waiting on is explicit sync, but the old model is implicit sync. Traditionally with graphics APIs like OpenGL, the necessary synchronization has been done implicitly without the application's involvement. This means that the kernel and or the user space graphics driver look at the commands the application is sending to the GPU, check which images the commands are using, which previous tasks have been completed before it, and potentially make the application wait until the dependencies of the commands it wants to execute are resolved. 
Now, due to it needing to determine the order the commands need to be run, this does come with some potential performance overhead. How much that really is, is kind of hard to say, but at least theoretically, there is some overhead. But the benefit here is this model makes it easy for application developers to write correctly working applications, but it can also cause issues. The most relevant of them for Wayland is the application isn't aware of which task it's synchronizing to, and it can happen that you accidentally and unknowingly synchronize to GPU commands that don't have any relevance to your task. So if the computation goes wrong, it might cause some additional issues that are really hard to debug and might not consistently happen across different runs and across different hardware. This has been a problem that Wayland compositors have been affected by for a long time. When presenting application images to the screen, compositors picked up the latest image the application has provided, which could still have GPU tasks running on it, instead of an early image that's actually ready for presentation. This meant that sometimes presentation was delayed by the kernel, and you'd see a frame be dropped entirely, instead of just a slightly older image. This issue has been resolved for most compositors in the last two years using what's effectively explicit sync through a backdoor. Now, backdoor here meaning a hack solution, not the other kind of Linux backdoor. Now, the new model is explicit sync. The name already suggests exactly what it does. Instead of the driver or the kernel doing potentially unexpected things in the background, the application explicitly tells the relevant components, driver, kernel, compositor, other apps when rendering is complete, and what task to synchronize to in the first place using various synchronization primitives, instead of the alternative, which is implicitly trying to infer what it should depend on, which mostly works fine, except when it doesn't. If the application explicitly says, okay, this is what I depend on, do it in this order, you're going to probably have a better experience. Now, the application can still define things in a stupid way and make it really bad, but if it's used well, it's going to work better. On the application side, explicit sync is used in Vulkan and the Wayland protocol specifically is used internally by OpenGL and Vulkan drivers to synchronize with the Wayland compositor. This explicit way of synchronizing GPU commands doesn't just help avoid accidental synchronizations. It also helps improve performance by reducing the work drivers have to do. Instead of having to figure out the dependencies of a task from a relatively opaque list of commands, apps just tell them directly. Now, this Linux DRM sync object protocol is not the first protocol attempting to solve this problem. There was actually another one merged way back in 2018, ZWP Linux Explicit Synchronization v1. But as is sometimes the case, it had a design flaw. It shared a limitation with implicit sync. In order to get a synchronization primitive, it still required the GPU commands to be first submitted to the kernel. The new protocol, in contrast, allows it to create and share synchronization primitives without submitting work to the GPU first, which, at least in theory, will allow applications to squeeze a little bit more performance out of your hardware in the future. Do keep in mind though, these performance improvements are minor. While there may be some special cases where implicit sync between app and compositor was a bottleneck before, you're unlikely to notice the individual difference between implicit and explicit sync. So it's not like you're gonna get like an extra 10, 15 FPS in your games, but a little bit of extra performance for a solution to a problem that was not gonna get fixed otherwise I think is fine. But what happens if you have a situation where the only thing you support is implicit sync and the GPU driver expects there to be explicit sync? Well, you get NVIDIA. The proprietary NVIDIA driver doesn't support implicit sync at all, and neither commonly used compositor nor the NVIDIA driver support the explicit sync protocol, which means on Wayland, you get significant flickering and frame pacing issues. The driver also ships with some workarounds, but they don't exactly fix the problem either. It delays Wayland commits until rendering is completed, but it goes against how graphical APIs work on Wayland, and it can cause serious issues, even crash apps in extreme cases. It delays X11 presentation until rendering is completed. But as X Wayland copies window content sometimes, 
that still often glitches if X Wayland is also using the NVIDIA GPU for those copies. This is one of the relatively common cases on Wayland where you don't really get a choice as a developer how you want to implement it. You either implement it the way this other tech needs it to be implemented, or you just don't have that thing working. NVIDIA doesn't really care about the tiny Linux desktop market, but users do, and users want their NVIDIA GPUs to work. Other cases like window placement. There are all of these applications that are never going to be updated for a Wayland specific solution. Or you have things like DRM leasing over on GNOME to make VR headsets work. Valve is putting their backing behind KDE and makes their system work with this protocol that KDE implements. You either implement that protocol, or you just don't have the thing work. Whilst this whole explicit sync situation has been very annoying for the user, in the long run, NVIDIA is going to be right here. The explicit sync model has already been adopted by other operating systems a long, long time ago. That's why NVIDIA doesn't care to support implicit sync because the Windows market doesn't use implicit sync. NVIDIA is acting as the bad guy here as NVIDIA tends to do, but by doing so, it has forced the Linux graphics stack to at least catch up to the last decade. There's been a lot of discussions around the internet between people experiencing the issues constantly and others not seeing any. And now you should know why it doesn't seem to affect everyone. It's not a deterministic, this doesn't work problem, but a lack of synchronization. So NVIDIA on Wayland doesn't actually use synchronization. So things just happen. We get race conditions. Race conditions are very fun, which means that a lot of factors like the apps you use, the CPU and GPU you have, the driver version, the kernel, compositor, and so on, decide whether or not you actually see the issue. These are the worst kinds of bugs to debug because any little detail can change the entire result. With the explicit sync protocol being implemented in compositors and very soon in X Wayland and the proprietary NVIDIA driver, all those problems will finally be a thing of the past. And the biggest remaining blocker for NVIDIA users to switch to Wayland will be gone. We are actually getting to a point in the very, very near future where the GPU you have is no longer going to be part of the discussion of whether or not you will use Wayland. That does not mean that we don't have a bunch of other problems to deal with. Those still exist, and those have not been dealt with yet, okay? But, at least if you're an NVIDIA user, you'll be on the same page as everybody else. But I have absolutely no doubt that as soon as this protocol goes into place and people are actually using it, um, issues are going to be discovered. <laughs> because that's just how software works. You do small-scale testing, you do your test suites, things look good. And then some weird user has some weird configuration and you have no idea why it breaks, but that's just the nature of software. Very soon, NVIDIA is going to be ready for Wayland. And I don't have an NVIDIA GPU, but maybe a generation or two from now, I will at least consider it. Maybe. But what do you think? Are you an NVIDIA user? Are you a Wayland user? Have you noticed these problems? Have you not? Has the experience been completely unusable or has it been great? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, Silly Verapay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and don't be too explicit. Daytime,